Maccabeam, Rishon, 1 Maccabees, 9. Furthermore, when Demetrius heard the Nicanor and his host were slain in battle, he sent Bachides and Alchemus into the land of Yahudah the second time, and with them the chief strength of his host, who went forth by the way that leads to Gilgal, and pitched their tents before Masaloth, which is in Arbel, and after they had won it, they slew much people. Also the first month of the hundred fifty and second year, they encamped before Yerushalayim, from whence they removed and went to Baria, with twenty thousand footmen and two thousand horsemen. Now Yahda had pitched his tents at ele a -le, and three thousand chosen men with him, who, seeing the multitude of the other army, to he so great were sore afraid, whereupon many conveyed themselves out of the host, so much so as abode of them no more but eight hundred men. When Yahuda therefore saw that his host slipped away, and that the battle pressed upon him, he was sore troubled in mind, and much distressed, for that he had no time to gather them together. Nevertheless, unto them that remained, he said, Let us arise and go up against our enemies, if perchance we may be able to fight with them. But they dehorded him, saying, We shall never be able. Let us now rather save our lives, and hereafter we will return with our brethren and fight against them, for we are but few. Then Yahuda said, Far be it that I should do this thing, and flee away from them. If our time has come, let us die manfully for our brethren, and let us not stain our honor. With that the host of Bachides removed out of their tents, and stood over against them, their horsemen being divided into two troops, and their slingers and archers going before the host, and they that marched in the forward were almighty men. As for Bachides, he was in the right wing, so the host drew near on the two parts, and sounded their shofars. They also of Yahudah's side, even they sounded their shofars also, so that the earth shook at the noise of the armies, and the battle continued from morning till night. Now, when Yahudah perceived that Bechides and the strength of his army were on the right side, he took with him all the hardy men, who discomfited the right wing, and pursued them unto the Mount Ashdod. But when they of the left wing saw that they of the right wing were discomfited, they followed upon Yahuda and those that were with him, hard, rather hard, at the heels from behind. Whereupon there was a sore battle, so much so as many were slain in, on both parts. Yahuda also was killed, and the remnant fled. Then Jonathan and Shimon took Yahuda, their brother, and buried him in the sepulchre of his fathers in Modin. Moreover, they bewailed him, and all Yashadael made great lamentation for him, and mourned many days, saying, How is the valiant man fallen? that delivered Yashara El. As for the other things concerning Yahuda and his wars, and the noble acts which he did, and his greatness, they are not written, for they were very many. Now after the death of Yahuda, the wicked began to put forth their heads in all the coasts of Yashara El, and there arose up all such as wrought iniquity. In those days also was there a very great famine, by reason whereof the country revolted and went with them. Then Bachides 
chose the wicked men and made them lords of the country. And they made inquiry and search for Yahudah's friends and brought them unto Bechides, who took vengeance of them and used them despitefully. So was there a great affliction in Yashadael, the like whereof was not since the time that a prophet was not seen among them. For this cause all Yahudah's friends came together and said unto Yonathan, Since your brother Yahudah died, we have no man like him to go forth against our enemies and Bachides and against them of our nation that are adversaries to us. Now, therefore, we have chosen you this day to be our prince and captain in his stead, that you may fight our battles. Upon this, Jonathan took the governance upon him at that time and rose up instead of his brother Yahuda. But when Bechides got knowledge thereof, he sought for to slay him. Then Jonathan and Shimon, his brother, and all that were with him, perceiving that, fled into the wilderness of Tekoa, and pitched their tents by the water of the pool Esfar, which when Bechides understood, he came near to the Yardan with all his host upon the Shabbat. Now Jonathan had sent his brother Yahuchanan, a captain of the people, to pray his friends the Nabathim, that they might leave with them their carriage, which was much. But the children of Jambri came out of Medaba and took Yahuchanan and all what he had and went their way with it. After this came word to Yonathan and Shimon his brother that the children of Jambri made a great marriage and were bringing the bride from Nadabatha with a great train as being the daughter of one of the great princes of Canaan. Therefore they remembered Yahuchanan, their brother, and went up and hid themselves under the covert of the mountain, where they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, there was much ado and great carriage, and the bridegroom came forth, and his friends and brethren, to meet them with drums and instruments of music and many weapons. Then Jonathan and they that were with him rose up against them from the place where they lay in ambush and made a slaughter of them in such sort as many fell down dead and the remnant fled into the mountain. And they took all their spoils. Thus was the marriage turned into mourning and the noise of their melody into lamentation. So when they had avenged fully the blood of their brother, they turned again to the marsh of the Yardan. Now when Bechides heard thereof, he came on the Shabbat unto the banks of the Yardan with a great power. Then Jonathan said to his company, Let us go up now and fight for our lives, for it stands not with us today as in time past. For behold, the battle is before us and behind us, and the water of the Yardan on this side and that side, the marsh likewise and wood, neither is there place for us to turn aside. Wherefore cry ye now unto heaven, that ye may be delivered from the hand of your enemies? With that they join battle, and Jonathan stretched forth his hand to smite Bechides, but he turned back from him, rather turned back from him. Then Jonathan and they that were with him leapt into the Yardan and swam over unto the other bank, howbeit the others passed not over the Yardan unto them. So there were slain of Bechides' side that day about a thousand men. Afterward returned Bechides to Yerushalayim and repaired the strong cities in Yahudah the fort in Yericho, and Yamim, and Beit Koran, and Beit El, and Timnah, 
Farathoni, and Tapuach. These did he strengthen with high walls, with gates, and with bars. And in them he set a garrison, that they might work malice upon Yashara'el. He fortified also the city Beit Surah, and Gazam, and the tower, and put forces in them, and provision of victuals. Besides, he took the chief men's sons in the country for hostages, and put them into the tower at Yerushalayim to be kept. Moreover, in the hundred fifty and third year, in the second month, Alchemus commanded that the wall of the inner court of the sanctuary should be pulled down. He pulled down also the works of the prophets. And as he began to pull down, even at that time was Alchemus plagued, and his enterprises hindered, for his mouth was stopped, and he was taken with the palsy, so that he could no more speak anything, nor give a order concerning his house. So Alchemus died at that time with great torment. Now when Bacchides saw that Alchemus was dead, he returned to the king, whereupon the land of Yahuda was in rest two years. Then all the wicked men held a council, saying, Behold, Jonathan and his company are at ease and dwell without care. Now, therefore, we will bring Bacchides hither, who shall take them all in one night. So they went and consulted with him. Then removed he and came with a great host, and sent Sepharim privily to all, rather to his adherents in Yahuda, that they should take Jonathan and those that were with him. Albeit they could not, because their counsel was known unto them. Wherefore they took of the men of the country that were authors of that mischief, about fifty persons, and slew them. Afterward, Jonathan and Shimon and they that were with him got them away to Beit Betsi, which is in the wilderness, and they repaired the decays thereof and made it strong. Which thing when Bacchides knew, he gathered together all his host and sent word to them that were of Yahuda. Then went he and laid siege against Beit Betsi, and they fought against it a long season and made engines of war. But Jonathan left his brother Shimon in the city and went forth himself into the country, and with a certain number went he forth. And he smote Odomora and his brethren and the children of Thasrian, rather, Pasiron, in their tent. And when he began to smite them, and came up with his forces, Shimon and his company went out of the city and burned up the engines of war and fought against Bachads, who was discomfited by him, rather by them, and they afflicted him sore, for his counsel and travail was in vain. Wherefore he was very wroth at the wicked men that gave him counsel to come into the country, inasmuch as he slew many of them, and purposed to return into his own country, whereof when Jonathan had knowledge, he sent ambassadors unto him. To the end he should make peace with him, and deliver them the prisoners, which thing he accepted, and did according to his demands, and swore unto him that he would never do him harm all the days of his life. When therefore he had restored unto him the prisoners, that he had taken aforetime out of the land of Yahuda, he returned and went his way into his own land. Neither came he any more into their borders. Thus the sword ceased from Yahshadael, but Yonathan dwelt at Mikmash and began to govern the people, and he destroyed the wicked men out of Yahshadael.